Hi Gemini, welcome to Carol's Universe Tarot Readings, Tarot Readings from the Heart. Today is your uh, 2016 live spread reading. I'd like to uh, give my apologies at how long it's taken to put this up. I think it's before Christmas I started putting these up. These videos take ages to do and I have many of them to do besides running my tarot business which is extraordinarily busy most of the time. So uh, please forgive me if things take a bit of time to come up. They do come up, I would never do you know eight signs and then not do the rest i would do everybody obviously so yeah this is for uh the 2000 year 2016 i want to tell you how this works i use two decks of cards so i use i work from a small space at the moment uh, i'm using the rider tarot deck miniature edition and i'm also using the universal tarot the universal weight pocket tarot deck okay now uh, how I do this is I only use from this deck the major arcanas. So I separate the major, major arcanas out, okay? And these are used as anchor cards. And I'll explain some more about that in a moment. The Rider Tarot deck, I use all of this deck. I shuffle the cards, cut them into three, and then collect them back up. And I will then focus on five areas of your life. So I focus on your personal life, your home life, your career your love life, your future. And also I pick one card out to serve as your um, to serve as your information stroke advice card. It's something that the universe needs you to know at the current time. OK, now in each area, it is governed by a group of four cards. OK, so your personal life will have four cards, home life for career for love for and future for. OK, at the top of each group, at the top of each uh, group of cards we've got four okay so the first card will represent your key card and that'll be an influence that you're feeling now in that particular area of your life or it will be an influence that you're feeling coming in in the future okay the, the last three cards underneath the top card the key card will represent situations that you've probably experienced in your past present and things that are to come in the future if you if it's no longer in the past, then it's something that you're experiencing now in the present. So we would look at the cards as a progression. The last three cards as being past, present, future or present, present, future or present, future, future or it's all future. And that's for all key areas. I hope that makes sense to you. We then with these cards, the major arcana, shuffle these, cut the deck into three, collect it back up and we distribute seven cards out okay so each of those cards will be an anchor card for each of the areas now when i say anchor card i mean it will be a card that will show how a situation in your personal life home life career love life and future will be resolved okay so card number one in the anchor will be your basis foundation we always start off with that card to explain how some of you guys might be feeling at the moment but that card also relates to your personal life and once we've had a look at what potentially is happening in your personal life, we will then look at how that situation will play out, which should be shown in that basis foundation. The same thing will go for your love life, which will be represented by card number two. Number three is for career, but also for career, we can also look at not only card number three, we can also look at the love card number two, card number five, which is the immediate future, and card number six, which is wishes. And uh, card number four is central theme. So that is how potentially you'll handle the situation overall. Uh, card number five, uh, which is the immediate future card in the anchor, will relate to the future card. And card number seven is basically going to talk about how things are actually heading. OK, I hope that that makes sense to you. It's an awful lot for me to explain. It takes bloody ages. I think this is the quickest uh, time that we explain that. But you'll see as we go through the reading. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to start shuffling the cards. The first set, the, the Rider Tarot deck. Okay, so I'm just going to start shuffling these. Universe Spirit, show me what's coming in 2016 live spread for the Zodiac sign of Gemini. And let me just let me just sort these cards out a moment, guys.
Universe Spirit, showing what's coming in for the Zodiac sign of Gemini and their life spread for 2016. So areas that I need to focus on are Gemini's personal life, show me the key card, past, present, future. Gemini sun, moon and rising signs, please, for personal life, for their home life, key card, past, present, future. Gemini's career, sun, moon and rising signs, key card, past, present, future. Gemini's love life, sun, moon and rising signs, please, for Gemini. Key card, past, present, future. And Gemini, Sun, Moon and Rising signs for their career. Key card, Sun, Key card, Past, Present, Future. And please show me the information and advice that you need Gemini people to know at the moment. Show me. I'll ask once again. This is a reading for Gemini for the year 2016. This is their life spread. We're focusing on five areas of their life. Please can you show me the events, situations for Gemini, Sun, Moon and Rising signs in these five areas. So Gemini, Sun, Moon and Rising, Personal Life, Key Card, Past, Present, Future. Gemini, Sun, Moon and Rising, Home Life, Key Card, Past, Present, Future. Gemini, Sun, Moon and Rising signs, Career. Key card, past, present, future. Show me Gemini. Um, love straight relationships. Gemini, sun, moon and rising. Key card, past, present, future. And Gemini, sun, moon and rising. Future. Key card. Sun, Moon and Rising and also the Information Advice card. Show me. Okay, that's been shuffled properly. We're going to split the deck into three. Gather it back up. And we're going to put down, first of all, the personal life. Home life. One, two... Three, four. Um, so I got itchy back. Korea. Your um, love straight relationships. Okay, one, two, three, four. And also your um, future card. Key card one, two, three, four, and the advice card that you need to know. Okay. Just going to get the major arcanas now from the other deck. Universe Spirit, show me the seven anchor cards that will represent these five key areas. I need to know what the basis and foundation are for Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising signs. Card number two, love, Sun, Moon, and Rising signs for Gemini. How it correlates to the love section. Please show me number three, career. That correlates to career for Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising signs. Show me the central theme, the card number four. Show me the immediate future, card number five. That correlates to the future position. Show me the wishes card for Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising signs. How they're wishing the situation would go. And finally, show me the future card overall in the in terms of how things and events are heading, which way they're heading for Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising signs. Show me. Okay, shuffled properly. Going to split the deck. Going to put down first card, basis, foundation. Card number two, love. Card number three, career. Card number four, central theme. Card number five, future, immediate future, sorry. Card number six, wishes. And card number seven, the overall uh, direction things are heading, uh, the situations are heading through. So here we go. This is the exciting part. Let's have a look what's uh, coming up for you.
enough. Hmm. Ugh. The hell. Don't shoot the messenger, please, guys, okay? This is just the cards that come up, okay, darlings? And the future. Let's have a look at the other ones. Funny, I just knew the devil card was going to show up. My head, I didn't even turn the card over, and my head was like, That's the devil card for some reason. How odd is that? Okay. It's not a bad reading, Gemini, but you know, immediately I can see that there is a lot of stuff that you guys kind of need to um, sort through in 2016 in terms of your life. This is probably one of the most. Um, I'm not saying one of the worst readings I've done in terms of the life spread, but it's it, it just seems that you have to go through challenges to get to the good stuff. There's nothing here that suggests to me that the good stuff is there immediately for you. It's more like you have to go through something in order to get through it. Um, or it's more like you have to kind of purge yourself of something, Gemini, to, to, to get to the good stuff. This is what I'm sensing here with, with your life spread. We're going to start off with how you're feeling at the moment, which is really a wonderful card, really feelings because it's the star card now the star card never be uh never misunderstand the tarot because the tarot is multifaceted and it's multi-layered okay the star card in its general meaning is uh everything feels bright everything feel, you feel that you're feeling a sense of confidence uh about something and i feel that you guys are i feel that you in your personal lives which this card does relate to but we're looking at it in terms of how you're feeling at the moment um for some of you guys, it could be that you're literally feeling upset or you're literally feeling really kind of like highly emotional. Because whenever I look at the star card, all I see is a naked woman pouring jugs of water back into a stream. OK, so it's almost like she's pouring her heart out or she's pouring, you know, waters. Water represents emotion. And there's a lot of water there with this star card, a lot of water. So to me, this suggests and also the woman is naked. So she's highly kind of vulnerable. She's kind of. um highly susceptible to stuff okay she's also in the spotlight or highlighted okay so there might be something that's happening in your life at the moment that's putting you at the forefront of something uh, gemini in terms of uh, people in terms of the way that people view you some of you guys might be feeling extraordinarily vulnerable at the moment you might be feeling quite teary-eyed or a little bit down about a situation in your life alternatively with the star card it's a beautiful card because it talks about feeling optimistic so even though some of you guys might be feeling a slight depression or a slight sadness or highly emotional in your personal lives i also feel that this is kind of curtailed by a sense of optimism as well that this too shall pass that things can only go up that things are going to get better your personal life to me is showing us a very interesting thing because we've got the eyes of pentacles in reverse when it's upright, it's about money in the hand. It's about receiving money. It's about job contracts. Um, it's about a new home potentially as well, because the pentacles can represent buildings and homes. OK, so and this if you look at this card here, it's like a gateway. It's like a new garden or something. So sometimes that ace of pentacles can actually represent a contract on a new home a new grounded beginning somewhere okay when it's reversed it means that something sometimes it means that something has fallen through okay so something didn't come to completion you've lost out on something you've lost money on something um it can be where uh money is difficult to come by or money kind of slips through your hands uh or it's difficult to hold on to money or it's difficult to gain money. But it's the reverse of what it is upright. It simply means 
that money there might be scarcity with money as well in terms of your personal life for some of you gemini people okay and i'm feeling that there is certain scarcity and i do feel that in the past straight present i feel this is more present that there is uh some burden here because we've got the ten of wands because of this situation because of the lack of funds or uh, because maybe a contract's falling through, it could also mean the loss of a job when the Ace of Pentacles is in the reverse. There is burden here. And I feel it's burden, uh, you know, you look at this guy in the Ten of Wands, Gemini, and he's carrying ten heavy uh, uh, wands in front of him, okay? He's trying not to face up to the realistic, uh, the realism of what he's charging towards, okay? So he's just going to keep going. He's closing his eyes and he's just going to keep doing it, okay? So it's almost like he suffers in silence in a way with that card. So I do feel some of you guys are suffering with silence, okay? I feel that you're, you're trying to make it towards something. You're trying to achieve something, but it's almost like life is throwing you a curveball. And it's kind of put some kind of barrier in your way. But you still keep going. That's what I sent with the Ten of Wands. It's also a card about a lot of responsibility. So for some of you Gemini people, you might have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. A lot of responsibility. And I feel that this is something to do with the home as well. Because we do have the Empress as an outcome card. And that is often to do with uh, building a beautiful home. A beautiful, secure, stable environment for ourselves. Okay, It's also about our ideas coming to fruition and really working on those things. And being quite successful. There's abundance that shows there. In the present situation, it shows the moon. So this can be deep-rooted depression often really feeling down about a situation i do sense that some of you gemini's are feeling like that because there is burden there there's a lot of responsibility and with the eight of pentacles in the reverse as an influence that's around now or coming in in the future i feel it might be around you guys now though you know there might be a slight i don't know what i'm going to do i don't know how i'm going to sort this situation out but it does get sorted because we've got the empress in the future it shows that you're sitting pretty and whatever it is that has fallen through with that ace of pentacles it's going to come good for you okay the empress is often a card about nurturing it's about uh waiting for the crops to come through building uh it's about seeds it's about putting things into action it's a number three card so it's really about building and expanding on an idea that's what the Empress does. That's what she represents. She represents all the number three pip cards. Three of Pentacles, Three of Cups, Three of Swords. Okay, so it could be literally where you receive some help here. Because the Empress is also, to me, group energy as well. Because it represents number three more than one person. There may be some slight waiting time with the Empress. Okay. Wheels are indefinitely in motion to help you out of a difficult situation in your, in your personal life, which I think pertains either to your home or it pertains to some kind of finance there, Gemini. But just know that you've got help and it's going to come through for you. And we do have the star card as a resolution, which says that there is definite hope. As a resolution card, as an outcome card, when you get the star card, you don't need to fear it. It's a brilliant major arcana card to get because it shows that the universe has got you back and you're going to be absolutely fine. OK, this is working towards a very positive resolution for you. OK, so if there is any worry around your home, uh, around stability, because the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Pentacles to me doesn't represent stability, though, financially wise. Some people regard this card as being the best card in the tarot deck. I, I don't think it is. I think it's, you know, the Ace of Pentacles can literally be where uh, you're working as a contractor and somebody calls you up and says, you know, can you do this contract for a couple of weeks? And you, you know, you either get paid in advance or you get paid when you've done the job. And then that's that. It can literally just be money in the hand. Money is coming from somewhere, but it doesn't always mean a stable source of income. The Ace of Pentacles is not a stable source of income half the time. It's just something that gives you some luck or gives you some cash there and then. But it's not like the Knight of Pentacles, which is the stable source of income, which talks about longevity. The Ace of Pentacles doesn't talk about longevity as far as I'm concerned. So this is something that is kind of um, temporary, I feel. Absolutely temporary. And it's something that might have been just a small thing. And I, I get the impression that even though you are struggling potentially for some of you Geminis in your personal life, and even though there is some potential anxiety or worry there with that moon card, it's all going to come good with the Empress card. Okay? Because what you're going to find is even though the Ace of Pentacles has been turned in the opposite direction, in the downright direction, in the reverse, 
the Empress shows that the outcome is still good. So to me, this means group energy. You will receive some assistance or some help to help you to nurture and grow whatever it is that you're trying to do. It also shows that you're going to be very comfortable. The Empress card is often the card of com feeling comfortable. If you look at this lady here, she's sat on cushions. She's very comfortable indeed. She's sat in a beautiful garden, a beautiful setting. So to me, this suggests, you know, real kind of uh, stability coming in for you guys in terms of your personal life. In whatever capacity this takes. For some of you guys, I'm getting also in your personal life, maybe for some of you guys, there's a struggle for conception for some reason. I don't know why. The moon card can sometimes represent uh, a female uh, cycle. It's a menstrual cycle. Sometimes difficulty with that. Ten of Wands can sometimes be the burden card. Trying to work towards something, but it's difficult. And the Empress can often be motherhood, giving birth. So I feel that if any of you guys have been trying to work towards getting pregnant in 2016, then this will happen. And also because we've got the star card as the outcome, it shows that uh, you're on your way to something very positive happening here. In terms of your uh, home life, this is really interesting for some of you Gemini people because we've got the um, eight of wands, which suggests movement. So some of you guys were literally going to be moving, I feel. OK, you might be moving to a different part of the country, a different state, just a different area. You might be moving, yeah, to a different part, you know, a different country, because the Eight of Wands is often to do with flight, air flight, flying across the sky. But essentially, it's to do with flight, OK, movement. Some of you guys could be, as an influence, be receiving uh, some, some kind of news uh, regarding your home. What kind of news it is, I don't know. But um, I feel that some of you guys might be looking to uh, take flight from something, from a situation within your home. Or you may need to make a decision on something to do with your home. We have in the past the Nine of Wands. This is an interesting card in terms of home life. To me, it suggests protecting your territory. You're overly protective about where you live. You're defending where you live. So you might have had some issues regarding where you live potentially for some of you guys in your home life that you're needing to um, sort out. We also have past, present, uh, I think present uh, or future situation, five of swords. This is where somebody has the upper hand. So maybe uh, this is in terms of, for some of you guys, maybe if you're having issues paying the mortgage or the rent or uh, uh, there are issues with where you live. To me, this suggests with that, uh, uh, nine of Wands, and I feel this might be a present situation at the moment for you guys. Nine of Wands is protecting your environment, being on your guard. The Five of Swords is somebody has the upper hand. So it's this person here on the Five of Swords who you are kind of a little bit dubious around in terms of your home life. It could be literally where they're trying to attack you with stuff. It could be with news, it could be with emails, it could be with... Uh, it could be with uh, threatening emails or threatening correspondence with the eight of ones there for some of you guys. This could literally also be as an influence in the future. You guys just taking flight from the whole situation, potentially. But we do see the queen of wands in the outcome position and she's a real homemaker. She is. OK, uh, she's also, again, another travel card because she is wands. But she's also someone who is very much a multitasker. So I could see a problem being sorted out here with this Queen of Wands character. This could be someone that shows up in terms of the future who helps you with this issue with your home life. Okay. She's often seen as a mother as well. The Queen of Wands is. Um, but she's a multitasker and she's a businesswoman. She gets things done really, really fast. So I do feel that uh, if things have been taking their time potentially within your home or around the home, maybe this is something to do with bureaucracy or some sort of red tape that needs to be sorted out or sorted through for some of you Gemini people. I believe that there's a lady that's going to help you with that. This could be the Queen of Wands here. 
Well, this could indeed represent um, Gemini, you guys, kind of taking the lead, taking the upper hand, getting your mojo back and kind of making decisions for yourself. Maybe you're in the present situation feeling defeated about something. The Queen of Wands is not a defeated lady. She's very confident. So maybe you guys, you know, suddenly become confident in, in something that you need to kind of uh, work through in terms of your home life. I'm either seeing that Eight of Wands in terms of the key card influence that you're feeling now or influences that you're feeling in the future. If it's now, I feel that there is maybe some news, some difficult news that you're having to deal with in terms of your home life potentially with that Eight of Wands. Some of you might have decided that you need to get away from a problem. Okay, so you might literally have decided to just to do one, run away from it for a bit. Uh, but in the future, if something has kept you stuck or in kind of fighting mode, I feel that this Queen of Wands sorts it out, and I feel that she does it by correspondence with the Eight of Wands. We see uh, the Hanged Man. Uh, we don't necessarily have a key card that represents the home, uh, Gemini, but the Hanged Man is the central theme. So this is kind of looking at things from a different perspective. It's also having to make adjustments. So I feel that uh, the Queen of Wands, she's very clever and she's good at kind of sorting things through. She's really, really good at that. OK, so she might help you look at things in a different way or sort through things or approach a situation in a different way that helps to clarify or clear something up within your home life. Looking at your career, we have the judgment card as your key card. This is a card of freedom and liberation. OK, uh, I feel that uh, as an influence now, some of you guys are needing to feel liberated from where you are in terms of your career. You're needing to kind of maybe do something different. Maybe there's going to be a judgment made on your job. Maybe you're uh, wondering what's happening within your job currently. Uh, maybe you're waiting for some type of contact, potentially. Um, within the workplace maybe there's something that's kept you feeling a little bit anxious in terms of your job judgment can literally be where a decision is made so if you're waiting on something a decision to be made in terms of your work your job uh as a future influence or even now potentially then a judgment will be made you're going to find out something news is going to come in in the past position uh we're seeing in terms of your career death okay Death is the transformation card, it's the ending card. So for some of you guys, there might have been an ending in terms of a job that you were in previously, okay? Um, and maybe that's why we've got judgment also in, as the key card. So this could be something new that you're doing at the moment in terms of judgment, because judgment often means as well uh, a change from the past, so an ending of one cycle and something that's new, okay? Uh, these cards are very interlinked, okay? Judgment and death are very interlinked, okay? So death is an ending, judgment is the rising, if that makes sense. So in the past, we're looking at potentially the ending of a job here or the ending of a role that you were in. Uh, which means that the judgment card as a key card shows up in the present situation as starting potentially something new for some of you guys. What we're looking at at the present, potentially, present future, is the Knight of Pentacles. Okay, this is usually a stable job, something that is uh, gives in a reliable uh, source of income. But it can also mean something that's quite boring as well, something that lacks any excitement. And I feel maybe within your jobs, for some of you Gemini, you're, Geminis, you're feeling kind of like the job that you're doing. It might be also that you might have felt that you made a mistake changing from one area of work to the other. I'm feeling, I'm just getting that sense here. But for some of you guys, literally with this Knight of Pentacles, you might have something that's quite stable in the present, but it also might be quite boring. Which leads to, um, in the future, the Eight of Swords. This is the Confusion card. This is the card of, you kind of feel that you're stuck in something. And as... The uh, judgment card, if we were to look at that as a future influence, that would say to me that what's coming in is liberation from this. Okay, so you're going to find a way out of this Eight of Swords. 
okay so if judgment isn't what you're feeling at the moment then it will be what you're feeling in the future which is liberation from something that you felt a little bit dead with because the judgment card often represents us when uh, nothing is happening where there is inactivity okay but then something happens we're alerted to something we're woken up by something with the trumpet and suddenly it gives us a new fresh lease on life it reinvigorates us it renews us there's renewal there and I feel that uh, with this Eight of Swords showing in the future, I feel for some of you guys, you are in a job that you're not really appreciating potentially at the moment. And future-wise, it does show the Eight of Swords. But what it's saying to me with judgment as the key card or the influence that you're going to be feeling in the future is saying that there will be a release from that. Okay, There will be a release from feeling that uh, you are kind of stuck where you are in terms of your career. There will be something that makes you feel quite excited. And we see this as the resolution uh, with the Magician card. The Magician says that the ball is in your court. Okay, it's the card. This could be somebody that's coming in. Usually when you get the Magician, uh, this can represent somebody who's quite powerful as well. Someone who has the power and the means to create or to help you create something okay so this could literally be an individual uh that's coming in that's going to help release you from something that's quite boring within your work life they're quite powerful they're in control and they've got everything at their disposal to help you to move along up the career the career ladder so this could actually represent someone who does that okay alternatively this could represent you guys okay just taking the power back into your hands and actually finding a way to release yourself, okay? So the magician doesn't have to just represent someone who's powerful and someone who has all the tools at their disposal, but it can just simply mean that you've got all the tools, right from looking on the internet for a job, right from using a pen and a piece of paper to write down your resume, right from, you know, um, Court making telephone calls using your mobile to make it. whatever tools you have that's what the magician card is in order to change circumstances around okay so this is either somebody that's going to be releasing you from a job that you potentially become quite bored in quite like you know i can't be bothered with this it pays the bills but i'm not really into this to be honest with you or this is you guys finding ways to release yourself from this it's all interlinked anyway so whatever path you choose this person will be around you anyway in terms of your love life, it's interesting. An influence that you're feeling now or in the future, Gemini, is the Ten of Swords. Ooh, I hate this card. I do hate this card. I do. I do. Um, the Ten of Swords is a card about being betrayed. It's the card of feeling a lot of kind of mental anguish it's the card of feeling that somebody has let you down quite substantially and i feel for some of you guys it might be that somebody has let you down as an influence somebody may have let you down right now or somebody's potentially potentially i don't like to say could let you down in the future potentially okay um it's either where you've betrayed someone or you've been betrayed in terms of your love straight relationships Somebody that you trusted, potentially. Let's hope that it's you letting the person down and not the other way around if it's in the future. Influence. In the distant past, though, it shows the page of wands. Sometimes this page of wands can be acting without thinking. Okay, so just kind of going. Because the, the page of wands as an individual, it's a child, but it's a very mischievous child. And it's a child that kind of just likes to kind of just go for stuff and get involved with stuff. And they're quite excitable. So you might have been excited by something in the past. Okay. But that thing that you may have been uh, excited by or somebody's been excited by, if you've sort of just gone into something without thinking about it, may have led to some form of consequence. Because we have the King of Swords here showing up in the present. OK, uh, for some of you guys, you might have felt shut out. For some of you guys, this could be the person that's actually stabbed you in the back. The King of Swords, um, Gemini, and this would be representative of you potentially, is um, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius individual. OK, and it's funny that they should show up. All right. So maybe uh, it could be either you or somebody else who uh, has done this. Quite a cold character some of the time. Um I'm just taking another look at these cards together. 
But the King of Swords is usually a fair character. So I feel that somebody has done this. If it's an influence that you guys are experiencing now, I feel that this Ten of Swords is what's being done to you. And I feel that it's the Page of Wands potentially in the past that's done this or in the present. Okay, this would be someone potentially who's younger, someone who's quite virile. Pages usually go up to the age of 21, but it doesn't have to be just an age thing. It can just be a mental thing as well, the way that somebody thinks. So somebody can be quite childish and quite silly in their thinking, even into their 40s and 50s. It doesn't have to be necessarily a kid. It could simply be a state of mind. But I feel that somebody went and they did something without thinking. And it's left you in the present as the King of Swords having to make a decision on that. OK, you're having to kind of either cut someone out of your life, potentially in the present or, uh, you know, you're you're trying to come to a decision on where you want to go in terms of a relationship with that King of Swords. You're, you're looking at all the facts. You're not using your heart to make a decision. You're using your head. This person potentially or you might be feeling I don't trust someone, which that Ten of Swords can literally represent distrust, not trusting someone. So as an influence, it might be that you don't trust someone at the minute or in the future, you're not going to be trusting someone. And it could be this Page of Swords or Page of Wands or someone with those qualities about them. Someone who's a little bit kind of um, not that serious or somebody who's a little bit too, you know, too, too much of a fiery person not serious enough or not you don't feel that they're serious enough about the relationship and it could be in the future we're looking at the uh seven of pentacles where you're wondering do i invest any more in this relationship or do i kind of move on to something else i really feel that you guys are going to be looking at that in the future and looking at is it worth investing anything okay but I don't feel that it's something that you guys move out of easily because the uh, resolution to this is the moon. The moon is an interesting outcome card because it shows secrets and it shows lack of clarity. And it doesn't really, to me, when I see the moon, it doesn't see anything, it doesn't say anything is being resolved. It just shows undercurrents, but it doesn't show anything is being resolved as such. Okay. Um. So it's almost like you leave something hanging. And we've also got, funnily enough, how you're going to react to certain situations as the hanged man. So I think a hanged man, in terms of the central theme regarding to the love life situation, shows you kind of like sitting this one out for a moment, kind of just accepting something the way it is. But not willing to kind of make any changes with it, but just accepting something. No matter how uncomfortable something is, you might be willing just to accept it. And I feel with that moon, it would be expl um, ex uh, explanatory of the moon card, kind of just being in limbo, which I see that moon and the hanged man as being kind of a state of uh, suspense or a state of suspension. Uh, that's what I'm seeing with your love life. I'm seeing that you guys, for some of you guys, you have an important decision to make. It's someone you potentially don't trust or they've given you reason not to trust them. But you're reluctant. You're thinking, do I invest or not in this person? But you're reluctant to make a decision with that moon card and also the hanged man. The moon card can also suggest that this person who may have done something to you, if it's a case of that you don't trust them, you might have just cause not to trust them because the moon card can often represent someone who holds a lot of secrets. So they're not showing you truly who they are. Uh, in your future position, it's showing as justice, the key card. So you are going to uh, have justice in the future, okay? So there are going to be good outcomes in many areas of your life in terms of that justice card. And these are things that you might be implementing and putting into place yourself. So these are this is a future influence coming in. But it will be, you know, never be mistaken with this justice card. I never go by the textbook meanings of these cards. I just don't do that. I don't think it's worth it because to me, the tarot is so nuanced and it's so detailed that how can you? How can you say that if you are uh, in a relationship with someone and you know that they're a cheater and you're still um, you're still carrying on with them? OK, the justice might not come from you, but it might be that. You come home one day and you find them in bed with someone. That's justice. That's the revelation. That's what the universe is showing you. It's trying to show you exactly who this person is. You didn't ask for the justice, but the universe is showing you the justice. The universe is showing you this is what you have. 
and you're still not making the decision on the person, what do we need to do to show that this person is nothing more than a piece of crap? Do you see where I'm coming from? So I feel with the justice card, the universe is going to be showing you exactly what you need to know in the future. Exactly what you need to know. We've got the Knight of Swords here. This shows courage. It shows bravery. Okay. It shows someone who wants to go for something. The Knight of Swords is representative of your sign. So potentially for some of you guys, it could literally be whereby you're changing tack and you're moving forward with something okay in terms of the future okay it's literally where you kind of getting your mojo back getting yourself back in the game and just moving forward with your goals that's what united of swords often does alternatively this can represent a bit of a bully individual someone who's not very nice a lot of the time it can also represent fairly aggressive behavior or fairly aggressive communication but i don't feel that this will be the case i feel that this will be you guys and i feel that this is indicative of justice sort of making decisions that are fair and balanced to you and that is that you want to move forward so the justice card for me says with the knight of swords the justice remember is the influence card in the future and this is the decisions that are made to benefit everyone okay so it's either the universe is going to put situations in your path that are going to show you the way that things should be going or this will be you implementing changes and i feel one of the changes will be literally that you haven't got time to sit back you just want to move 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 but what's interesting is also in the future is the eight of cups in the reverse so this to me suggests staying put you're not moving forward and you should be moving forward it's weird it is weird how we have two cards that represent something totally different but this can also be that you don't feel the need to uh, push for certain things that you might be feeling with that justice card, a sense of contentment in the future. So you don't feel that you need to kind of, but then it would be out of sync with the Knight of Swords, who is pushing for change, who is pushing to achieve certain goals. But then is it so out of sync? Because the Knight of Swords, in terms of you guys, can simply mean in a certain area of your life you're looking to move forward. But then in certain areas with the Eight of Cups in reverse, you might be quite happy to kind of just stay in a certain area in your life. Justice, remember, is whatever you put in is what you get out. So if there is no activity in a certain area in your life with that Eight of Cups, it just shows that there is no movement forward, potentially. And finally, in terms of your uh, future, we've got the Page of Cups. So this is new love. It's It could be a younger person coming in, a uh, younger Scorpio, Pisces, Cancerian individual. This can also be someone who um, you have a lot of communication with also. Okay. Um, so there could be lots of kind of uh, romantic communication going on in terms of the future. And it will be what you deserve after you've gone through something in your love life, like what I've just talked about. Or it could literally be that this person who you're afraid to walk away from is sending these love messages to you and you're afraid to walk away. So you still stay there in the future with the eight of cups in the reverse. And that is your justice because whatever actions you take are exactly the repercussions that you get back. So never be fooled with justice. It doesn't mean, you know, you can't have a juxtaposition with justice, all right? A lot of the time. It's got to be whatever you do is what you reap. Whatever you put into something is what you get back. So if you're not willing to make any changes in your love life, if you're still kind of meandering and kind of like, oh, I don't know what to do with the moon card and the hanged man as the central theme of how you'll react, then, of course, this is where you stay. The Eight of Cups. In terms of uh, the key card for your future, we've got the Temperance card. Temperance is a card about mixing, matching, blending until you achieve the right balance for yourself. OK, so I feel that you are uh, going to be trying to uh, have your cake and eat it, if that makes any sense to you. In certain areas of your life, 
there'll be forward movement with that knight of swords in certain areas of your life you'll probably want it to stay the same with the eight of cups in reverse potentially in certain areas of your life you might be balancing a couple of relationships one relationship might be this one that i've just talked about with uh sort of just staying put with something and the other relationship could be with somebody else who's sending you messages through because we do have the wishes uh card showing as the devil why would anybody would wish for the devil card i feel for you guys you're just going to be looking for fun for a lot of you guys you're going to be looking for fun a little bit of hedonism potentially with that devil card alternatively you could be looking for release from situations that are no longer serving you or are feel, making you feel bound okay so the devil card in terms of your wishes within your career it could literally be that you're looking for some release from something that's rather controlling that's controlling you and makes you feel that you're bound to it the devil card in terms of uh in terms of your personal life again we're looking at some release again release i feel for the home life for the future, I feel that part of you will be looking to have quite a bit of fun because the Knight of Swords is a pretty fun person as well. So he likes having a lot of fun too. But with the Devil card uh, and your love life, I don't feel that you're looking really for release. I feel that you're kind of bound to someone potentially and it's hard for you to let go. So you therefore you might be wanting release with the Devil card, but at the same time, your uh, subconscious is telling you that you're still bound to this person. This is why you're still kind of trying to deliberate on whether you should stay or go. You you can't make a decision on that. There's no cards that tell me that a decision is made on this person. It's almost like they're intrinsically bound with you. They're under your skin or something like that, Gemini. And your advice card. Oh, no. The overall way that things are heading is the emperor. So this is someone who takes control of a situation so if you carry on moving in this direction the emperor shows up and the emperor is one about blockages as well staying firm with something so this is why i say you've got to look at the tarot not just in terms of uh what the meanings are in books we could all look at the emperor and say yeah the way things are heading is, is that you're back in control but no not necessarily the emperor is really stuck in his ways he really is stuck in his ways okay He's an old fuddy-duddy, okay? And he has certain ways of doing things. And what he says goes. So in some of these situations, I can see that you're potentially going to be stuck in your ways as the emperor. You're going to be resistant to change because the emperor is resistant to change. Number fours are resistant to change. They're resistant. That's why they're kind of stationary numbers. They're stationary people. Four of cups is resistant to change. Four of swords meditates and lies down and takes time out. It's inactivity, four of swords. Okay, four of pentacles won't let go. He stays stuck. He's stationary. Same as the emperor, resistant to change. So I feel that what it's saying here is for some of these areas, Gemini, you carry on going the way that you're going. Nothing changes. It stays the same because you don't let it change. But your advice card is you have to let change in because <laughs> we've got Wheel of Fortune, Gemini. You have to let change in. There are changes happening whether you like it or not. OK, forget all of this. You carry on and the universe is damn well going to bring change in for you because it wants the best for you and it wants you to be the best person that you can possibly be. What goes down must come up. OK, so if your love life and you're seeing someone who you think might be cheating on you or you think might not be very good for you, this Wheel of Fortune is saying, if you don't change it, if you're resistant like the Emperor is, the way things are heading is the Emperor. Things stay the same. But the advice information it has for you is, at any time these situations could change and you're going to have to fall in line with it because the Wheel of Fortune isn't messing about here. It wants the best for you. But if you aren't willing to implement changes this year, Gemini, then the universe damn well will. A lot of changes happening in terms of your life. We see this career, uh, personal life, home life. But there is a reluctance to this with, um, yeah, there's a reluctance to this with your love life for some reason. So you have to be ready for that. Okay. 
there are changes coming in yes we have some new love potentially two relationships maybe okay so there are some big changes happening for you but it's telling you not to resist the changes because that's what the emperor does he resists change he's a number four card he's about stability and foundation and they don't like change number fours don't okay that's your reading guys hope you enjoyed that i'm going to be back with your love readings very very soon i'd like to say thank you for joining me on carol's universe and also your february 2016 readings are coming up thanks ever so much for using my uh, youtube channel and for everyone who's ordered a reading and i will speak with you guys really soon take care my darlings bye bye